Good evening. It is hot. We're in full blown summer outfit. The board short sandals. What you don't know is that it's it's still 100 degrees in the shade. Nonsense. I'm here. It's not a Tech Talk Tuesday. I got something new here. I think you guys know what is here. And it's something that I've briefly touched on in the vlog. Now that it's out, I'm a couple days late with this. But as you know, we've been busy racing Carson City, racing the Blitz. This bike launched on the 15th, and now that it's fully out in the open, we can talk about it. I can give you my full impressions on the bike. We have the 2018 Crux in all its glory. We spent some time on this. We've raced it a bunch of times. We rode lost and found on it. It's light, it's fast, it's super awesome. And we're gonna kinda give you a quick rundown on some of my favorite features, things that are gonna appeal to you as a racer. So let's kinda, we'll work our way from front to back one of the key talking points about this bike is that there is literally nothing carried over from a previous model year's crux aside from axles from front to back, new carbon layups, new frame design, rider first engineering on it. The whole thing is front to back brand new. So the fork has a slightly aero profile to it. It's gonna uh, increase its stiffness and drop its weight, revamped cable routing gives it a much cleaner cleaner drop out, it comes out inside of the fork here. Working our way down, we go to flat mount brakes, and keeping with the same 12 by 100 millimeter through axle. Starting at the front and engaging in a turn, this fork is so stiff, so responsive, it makes the, the bike just plant where you put it, the rear end follows through. This is really the what I feel like is the workhorse of the bike. So moving back, we go to internal routing, easy to do feature, the hood scoops that were first launched on all of the epic full suspension bikes makes internal routing a breeze. Something that's different from this portion of it from previous model years is that the bike is now full cable routing, so there's no longer any housing stops on it. So front to back, from shifter to rear to railer, full housing. Cross racing in the muck and, and nasty weather, uh, we have a fully sealed housing system, but these little suckers make routing the cables a breeze. There's a port at the bottom of the tube, at the bottom bracket, that you just feed it right through into the uh, into the rear stay and out the back. What does go away is a feature that I liked, but a lot of folks never seem to use, was the old love handle. So we, we end up losing that little uh, kind of cup that was on the down tube when we're getting it up on our shoulder. But getting it up on the shoulder, no problem, uh, even without that there. The tube sizes for the top tube and the down tube do feel smaller in your hand. That's a a feeling of mine. I didn't actually do any sort of calculations or measurements on that. A little bit further back, a carryover design from the tarmac. So we now go to a collarless, uh, externally collared seat post clamp. So it's an inside uh, expander style clamp. So drops a ton of weight, cleans up the aesthetics, makes it super simple. Moving a little bit further back, we move into the chain stays. The stays on this bike are super pinner. They're tiny, super thin, but incredibly stiff. The rear end of this bike is an equal match to the front end of the bike. You don't have any front to back kind of noodly feeling or uh, wallowy sensations. And very well balanced bike. In fact, when you even pick up the bike, it's probably one of the most well balanced, just straight weight feeling bikes that I've ever ridden. Back those stays, uh, we go to a bridgeless seat stay. So there's no longer that little crossover clamp right above the tire. We're increasing mud clearance that used to be a huge gathering point especially when you're racing on grassy muddy tracks the mud comes off of that tire catches right there with all these grass straw and strings and everything's hanging out and there's dangle in there no more of that the bike no longer has a front derailleur mount it goes to a clamp style front derailleur if you ever wanted to i don't know why you would one by is the only way to go i'm stoked on that because for the last four years that we've been running one by I've had this empty looking goofy derailleur hanger that's sitting there, never used. Knew I was never gonna use it again, so why not get rid of it? This bike is the uh, super light paint, is what we're calling it. It's actually not even paint. It's raw carbon, a little bit of clear coat, designed to be as light as possible. The other option in the S-Works bike has a hydrophobic paint on it. So it's gonna shed water, it's gonna shed mud. Uh, the winning combination for cross uh, that's going to be an awesome awesome rig to have and a benefit that's never even been dabbled into uh, with racing cross and capturing mud and, and letting it kind of bulk up on the frame 
you can say goodbye to that too because now it's literally gonna throw mud onto it and it's gonna run right off. The two great race options, you just kinda gotta pick your poison, which one's more important to you. So now my ride impressions on this Mac Daddy. Um, this thing, I loved my previous Crux. When the, when the first generation carbon Crux came out in 2014, 2013, I kind of dubbed it the tarmac for the dirt. It's basically a tarmac for the dirt. It's fast, light. It's like, wow, you know, when are you gonna have a cross bike that will compete with any road bike out there? Uh, it was a great performing bike. It had a lot of design features that were specifically to cross. We ditched the things like the potential for rack and fender mounts, all these extra bottle cages. It really honed in on cross racing. Uh, so this bike for 2018, I can tell you, is truly a tarmac for the dirt. This thing is light, actually, it's lighter than tarmac. Snappy, responsive, quick handling. It's sort of one of those torquey sports car sensations. So when you hop into that seat of that sports car and you just floor it and that pushing back into the seat sensation, that torque, which is oh, so sick, uh, that's what this bike will deliver. You have to ride it to feel it, but I can tell you, once you do, it's, it's a sports car, it's a tarmac, it's so snappy, so responsive, it just wants to go. Stop into your local dealer, Come into Kinetic Cycles, but you have to ride this bike to feel it, to really understand what it does, let alone just pick it up. You're just like, wow, the thing is mind blowing. Guaranteed you're gonna want one. You get one of these for racing cross, you get a new Diverge for racing on the gravel or riding on the gravel. You need both bikes in your quiver because more now than ever, each one is tailored to that specific thing. We'll see in the races with these things. Um, this is not really a tech review, but it's definitely my review and kind of first look at the new Crux. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. We will see you guys tomorrow. We're going back up the hill to Carson City to race some mountain bikes. As always, thanks for tuning in. We will see you guys tomorrow. Over and out. Peace.